I had a request for an or a video about bond order, a bond length, and bond strength, and I know that the IB kids who watch these videos are aching for this right now. So let's talk about it. Now, bond order is a very easy concept to understand for our regular molecules that have single, double, and triple bonds. Because a single bond has a bond order of one, a double bond has a bond order of two, and a triple bond has a bond order of three. Bond order gets a little more complicated if there's resonance, because then sometimes you have single bonds or double bonds in the same place, and you'll end up with a fraction. I'll do some examples of that in just a second. But no matter what the bond order ends up being, a higher bond order will generally mean a shorter bond, because a triple bond is shorter than a double, which is shorter than a single. And it'll mean a stronger bond, because a triple bond is tougher to break than a single bond. That should make sense, because the triple bond actually has a single bond hidden within it. It's just got two extra pi bonds on top that you actually need energy to break. So, higher bond orders will mean shorter bonds and stronger bonds. We will use all of this as we do examples that I have loaded up for you. So, I'm always going to recommend you draw the Lewis structures, because that's how you can verify that you have the bond order you think you do. The Lewis structure for carbon monoxide, even though I'm catching a lot of flack lately for drawing it this way, even though it's correct, on one of my other videos, is a triple bond between carbon and oxygen. The Lewis structure for carbon dioxide is a double bond between carbon and each oxygen. And for methanol, I have carbon single bonded to the O, which is single bonded to the H, and then that carbon is also single bonded to each of the other H's. Now, I want to talk about the bond orders between carbon and oxygen. This is a triple bond, so the bond order is three. This is a double bond, so the bond order is two. And this is a single bond, so the bond order is one. The triple bond here is the shortest bond of the three, and the single bond is the longest bond of the three. This bond length is somewhere in between the triple and the single. Of the three bonds, the triple is also the strongest, and the single is the weakest. Put another way, if you were using UV energy to try to break these bonds, you would need photons of a lower energy to break this bond before these bonds broke at all. Now that was pretty easy because these all have a whole number bond order. Let's do it for something a little more complicated. This is the classic question for this. We have a Ethanoic acid here, which has the CH3 methyl group. You have a carbon that is double bonded to an oxygen and single bonded to an OH. But once you remove the H from it to get the ethano 8 ion, you still have your methyl group on the left hand side of the molecule. You have a double bonded O here and you have a single bonded O here, but it has three lone pairs and a formal charge of negative one. Now officially, ye, there is a resonance structure for that, because the double bond and the single bond, you can electron push to make that oxygen have the negative one formal charge, and this oxygen have the double bond. This is resonance, because you don't know for sure given only this ion structure, whether this oxygen is the single bonded and this is double, or if this is double and this is single. There are two valid Lewis structures, and the actual structure is somewhere about halfway in between. And I'm saying halfway because they're both equally valid. Now, what that means is that the bond in between carbon and oxygen here is between single and double. And because they are equal contributors to the hybrid resonance structure, the bond order between carbon and oxygen here is 1.5 for each of them. Here, this is a fixed double bond and this is a fixed single bond. The H attached to this oxygen makes it so. The bond order up here is a straight up double bond, and the bond order here is a straight up single bond. 
So among these structures, the double bond is the shortest and strongest, whereas the single bond here is the longest and weakest or least strong. Is that how I wrote it over here? Oh, it is. I wrote weakest there too. Great. Now, these two bonds, with because they both have a bond order of 1.5, are equal length and equal strength, because they have the same bond order. Oh, and because it's carbon and oxygen in both cases. But when this ion gets protonated, when you add the H, all of a sudden one bond stays longer and one bond shortens. It's crazy. Both of these have equal length and strength bonds, which by the way are about, like they are, their length is slightly longer than this one, but slightly shorter than this one. As soon as you add the H on here, this becomes a little longer and this becomes a little shorter. You can say the same for strength. This becomes a little stronger. This becomes a little weaker than these two, which have equal strength somewhere in between the two. That is the effect of resonance on bond length and strength. Let's show the effect of resonance one more time with these three. Now this is going to take a little while to draw. I'm not going to draw all the resonance hybrids for these, but the ClO ion, which has a minus one charge here, has a single bond there. A ClO2 ion has a double bonded O and a single bonded O. Oh, I forget how many lone pairs are on this. I believe it's just one. That has a minus charge. ClO3 has a Cl with two double bonded O's, a lone pair and a single bonded O. Now, if you don't know how to draw these Lewis structures, uh, I'm doing them because I memorized them because I'm a chemist, but you may want to draw them with the rules for drawing Lewis structures that either your teacher or your favorite YouTube chemistry guy, me, has put online for you. This chlorine has three double bonded O's and a single bonded oxygen. Da da da. I should write that minus out here. And these are the three Lewis structures. Now, these three have resonance structures. Suffice it to say that any of the oxygens in each case could have been the single bonded one. The bond order here is a straight up single bond because there's no other significant resonance structure for that. But here, this oxygen could be the one that's double bonded or this one could. What that means is that you have three bonds worth being spread out over two atoms. That gives us a bond order of 1.5. That bond order of 1.5 should remind you of the ethno 8 ion that I just showed you on the previous video. Here, the bond order, we don't know which two oxygens are double bonded, but we have one, two, three, four, five bonds worth spread out over three atoms. That's a bond order of 1.666 repeating, if you want to see the, the number for it. And the bond order here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bonds spread out over four atoms. That's a bond order of 1.75. Notice how you can have fraction bond orders if you have resonance. Okay, so 1, 1 1.5, 1.66, .6, and 1.75. The higher the bond order, the shorter the bonds, and the stronger the bonds. And I again, I want to emphasize that because there are equally contributing resonance structures, all four of these bonds are the same length and the same strength as each other. Even though the Lewis structure shows a single and three doubles, they are all the same length and strength because of resonance. Among these though, this is going to be the longest and weakest bond of all of them. And that's the way it works because bond order helps you predict the uh, length and strength of the bonds. I do want to emphasize, I used carbon, 
oxygen for all of these. As soon as you start intercomparing carbon oxygen to like carbon nitrogen, carbon bromine, I would never intercompare these types of bonds because they're not even between the same types of atoms. Okay? Almost under 10 minutes. I'm a boss. So are you. Best of luck.